to the public on July the 6th, 2021, the Honorable U.S. District Court issued a ruling denying me resentencing under the First Step Act. The court in its ruling voiced a number of concerns that I have carefully reviewed. I find it both necessary and appropriate to offer this general statement, making it available to all who ha may have an entrance or any concerns regarding my case and my possible release from prison. I do so with the hopes that I may clarify a number of issues that have been raised over these many years and most recently within both courts and various media outlets. Perhaps more important than anything else is at no time within the past 25 years have I issued any statement or granted any interview addressing my sentiments regarding the offenses for which I have been in prison. While I have been silenced, a number of individuals ranging from academics, prosecutors, police officials, media personalities, form of gang members, and others have written books, issued rulings, made pleadings in court, and have proffered a variety of speculative prognostications regarding myself and what I allegedly think, feel, and apparently stand for. It would take volumes for me to correct and refute all of the inaccurate information that has been circulated. I have come to realize that my silence over these years I have done myself a grave disservice. First, with respects to my culpability and my acceptance of responsibility, I want people to understand that the Larry Hoover speaking out today is a different person than the Larry Hoover accused in those past state and federal indictments. That being said, I do take responsibility for my wrongdoing and will not try to explain away or justify any of it. I was lost in an enduring pattern of criminality those many years ago. Looking back, thinking about what I have now come to understand about the nature of those things I have been involved and in fact have initiated, I cannot avoid taking responsibility. With this responsibility, now being able to to honestly assess and appreciate the magnitude and scope of the harm my actions have wrought. I cannot help but to have Im immense remorse. Moreover, this remorse is rooted in the sad reality of my circumstances. For 25 years, I've had a front row seat to the passing by of the world. I have consistently followed the news and current events, particularly those at home back in Chicago. And I can see the effects and consequences my past actions have contributed to. Even if at one time I had erroneously believed that my activity would somehow morph into a legitimate benevolent organization, the underlying effects ultimately acted as a break upon the actual progress that might have otherwise occurred. No one likes to think of themselves as bad. Oftentimes we tell ourselves things like, this is what everyone is doing, or I can go sh straight once I reach a certain mark, or even it's the way, it's the way the world is. These are mechanisms of self-justification and to a degree I once did the same. It's a powerful tactic employed within oneself designed to avoid having to face the damage occurring in our wake as we go about our criminality. Fortunately, it is not an exercise I continue to indulge. Second, the immediate and enduring consequences I have suffered is to have been confined within the ADX Colorado. This facility is often depicted and characterized as the Alcatraz of the Rockies, or as one past warden has said, it's as close to hell as possible. I can tell you that after 25 years within this place, 
these are apt depictions. Even so, if there has been any benefit to myself, to, excuse me, to either myself or to the community derived from my time here, it will be in what I have been able to come to terms with within myself and about myself. In my solitude here, I've had years to engage in self-reflection, introspection, and soul searching. I've had years to relive my life and the numerous crossroads I have encountered, whereby I might analyze my decisions and the choices I have made. During my trial and during subsequent collateral legal matters, the government has gone to great length to characterize me as a highly organized, intelligent, a natural leader, charismatic, and possessing superior management skills. To whatever extent any of that is true, my self-examination leads to the sad conclusion that I've wasted my talents entirely upon destructive and self-defeating endeavors that most hurt everyone around me, including my community and society at large. If I could take it back, undo it, I'd give anything to do so. I'm truly sorry for what I have done. Many men who find themselves lost here in the ADX avoid such self-reflection because in coming face to face with our truth, one finds pain of guilt and remorse. This environment, usually in and of itself, more than anyone can bear to pile on oneself the added burdens of guilt, regret, and remorse. It's true hardship. Nonetheless, for me, it has been unavoidable. As I've said, I have not spoken about any of this previously, and I wish that I had because it may have helped squelch or otherwise diminish another burden that my past has conspired to hang around my, about my neck, my unwanted notoriety. Thirdly, the court in this ruling made careful reference to the various factors statutorily utilized in determining whether a sentence is sufficient. One of those factors was deterrent, of which there are two kinds, I think. One, the force of the law that will work to deter myself from further criminality, and two, the examples the imposition of a sentence might establish deterring others from going down a similar path. With respects to the former, I can attest most affirmatively that the law has had the desired effect upon me. There simply exists no scenario, no path forward for me that involves criminal behavior. Pragmatism itself is sufficient to explain this, but for me, it's both pragmatic and moral. I don't want to be thought of as that guy any longer. In the case of the latter, in my experience, whether I am eventually granted release or I ultimately die in prison. The example of my case does not reach those the law rightfully seeks to deter. The nature of street crime and those immersed in it doesn't allow much in the way of such rationalization like the disincentive of likely imprisonment. Criminals live in the moment. Be that as it may, the court did voice reasonable concern relating to my age, residual notoriety, and an unspecified likelihood that I could again be involved in crime. I want to address these concerns specifically. My age, I am over 70 now, and though I wish it was otherwise, I do not possess the rigor or vitality the government attempts to attribute it to me. In reality, I suffer a spectrum of age-related chronic ailments that work to extremely limit what I am able to do. If I were released, I want nothing other than to be home with my family and grandchildren. Frankly, I have long since renounced my association with any and all criminal organizations and their membership. I am no longer a member, leader, or even an elder statesman of the Gangster Disciples. 
I want nothing to do with it now and forever. Again, my future allows no past forward that includes an association with anything or anyone involved in crime. Lastly, as to the court's valid concerns regarding the likelihood that I will return to criminality, this is not statistically speaking very likely at all. For one, me and my age, after serving 25 years in the ADX and over 50 years in total, don't return to crime. In reality, most use their final years to advocate for youngsters to turn away from crime. What is more, I fear the court hasn't fully taken into account the fact that the Larry Hoover under consideration is one who has spent 25 years in isolation, suffering lonely and alone in his own self-reflection, learning the exact lesson our justice system had hoped to engender when it sent him away. There is zero chance I would reoffend. Not only do I not want to waste my final years in self-destruction, I will want to fulfill a promise I made to my late beloved mother. I offer this letter so that it might clarify and lend insight into where I am at today. I know there are some that will probably remain unconvinced and choose to believe I'm beyond redemption. I hope to prove them wrong or at a minimum to alive their concerns eventually. I will hope that peoples will read this and accept my pledge that I am done with my past and I only ask for a chance to do right by my family and to lead this world on a positive note. With peace and respect, Larry Hoover.